What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another Street Photography Critiques video. A series in which we take your street photography photos and we critique them live on the channel. Now folks, we're gonna do it a little bit different today. Uh, usually what we did on the last one, on the very first episode, is we took three photos from each person and I think we did a total of like five people at most and then we did all three of their photos but to kind of speed things up and give some other folks a chance to be featured into the video i'm only doing one photo from each person now i did ask you guys for three entries so you had three different options to send through and what i did was i went through a random generator i put through all of the emails um, and i went ahead and selected 10 random numbers out of them and so these are the 10 people that have been selected so there's a lot of coverage and stuff that we're going to go ahead and talk about in the video let's just go ahead and jump right in with the very first one all right you guys now the first submission is by Chris Strickland now the image he submitted actually this is one of three was something that I chose because it's very similar to a Joel Myrowitz image really powerful but yet a very simple composition as you guys see here the mystery in this photo obviously is the microphone uh, the little microphone circle and it's covering the dude's head so it almost acts like something that blocks him off and adds this kind of like a replacement type of head for it I absolutely love the photo uh, it's really simple it's very straightforward Forward, um, but it moves the crowd so Chris great job on this photo man if there's anything that I could say that you could improve on maybe I mean you pretty much nailed this right on top of the head but maybe get the dude to turn towards us just so that you know it actually blocks his face rather than just his head but nonetheless Chris excellent job on this photo I love the black and white everything looks great on this image man keep it going all right, now the next photo here was submitted by Tony Bermudez. Now this photo is something that you see, it's almost like a classic street photography photo. You have the dude standing in the middle within a highlight and then the rest is shadows. Now why is this a very, very, very compelling composition? Tony, I think you did a great job in capturing the essence of the location. You found a streak of light and you're using that as a subframe so that when that subject walks through, it's highlighted. It's automatically going to be drawn. And in street photography, you want to treat your audience almost like children. You don't want them to have to search and kind of figure out and read through everything and comprehend the image. You want to be able to have them immediately know what they're looking at. So I think it, you did a beautiful job with this. Um, if I can say anything, one thing that you may be to improve on, I mean, I love the symmetry within it, the two poles there. I can see in the shadow there, there's a dude walking behind. Maybe if this was shot in black and white, you can go ahead and darken up those, uh, those shadows and cut him out and then kind of just have that dude within that highlight. So beautiful, beautiful image. Um, I definitely would suggest as well, when people are walking, catch them in stride, make sure their legs are kind of like forming this triangle shape. It's just going to add over to your composition and make it much more powerful. So Tony, I think you did a wonderful job with this image, man. Maybe black and white would do the trick for this photo, but I still think you absolutely did a great job with this photo. All right. Now the next photo here is by Noah Say. Noah did a wonderful job with this photo for a couple of reasons. First of all, this was shot squares. Now one thing that is kind of striking to me in this image is that street photography images don't always have to be super complicated. One big thing in street photography is being able to draw emotion. Emotion to the audience, emotion to the viewer. In this photo, the isolation of the girl, just little girl just sitting on that tree, first of all is innocent. And you also have that yellow dress which contrasts well with that tree and the natural colors of the, the leaves and everything. So you have complementary colors um, contrasting and also you have, you know, something that pulls and draws emotion out of the image so i think you did a great job compositionally as well noah um, as you see here we have folks these leading lines that lead straight to the little girl again like i always say leading lines are probably going to be your best friend in street photography you know they are essentially one of the most powerful tools of composition that you can use always look for lines leading straight over to your subject so noah say great job with this photo man i'm curious and i'm keen if you're watching this brother uh let me know was that shot on film or digital because it doesn't matter to me but it looks great all right, the next photo is from Sam McMillan. Now, this photo here reminds me of one thing in street photography, and it's also a very important, and it's called repetition. To us as humans, we are very used to seeing repetition. Things that are in patterns are gonna be more appealing to the eye. So when you have a composition like this, as you guys see, there's one, two, and then three, and then it just keeps on going down all the way to the very end there. That's repetition. And when you see repetition within a photo, it's gonna be very attractive to the eye. So keep that in mind. 
things that are going to be used in repetition are going to be like hallways or you know different corridors and such like that now one thing as well you did have a really nice leading line sam i really enjoyed that as well and overall just this kind of gave me like an architecturesque type of photo feeling because there's so much repetition you want to have something that contrasts at the very end there you have the people i think it I think you did a great job capturing, you know, framing and composing the image correctly. But one thing that I would do is probably fish there and wait a little bit. Wait for the right subject, maybe just one person and catch them in stride because the isolation of having that one person, but also having that repetitive, repetitive uh, kind of gap and highlight opening, it's going to really be a big contrast in that image. So like I said, great job again, man. Compositionally, you did a wonderful job. The people that are standing at the end there are uh, look to be all wearing black. I mean, it's a black and white film, uh, but it does a great you did a great job with contrasting them apart from the actual like building and composition. So Sam, wonderful job man maybe just wait next time till it's just like one person or something different uh, catch them in stride again and just continue using that repetition to go ahead and build uh, kind of like a pattern for your eye to follow through with all right you guys now the next submission was by faviana camargo and one thing that i think this person did really well within their photo is use natural arrows now you can find arrows in literally any given situation you can find them on the streets you can find them in buildings you can find them practically everywhere you go and that's what makes them such powerful tools we're kind of hardwired to when we see an arrow we automatically look in that direction so it makes for a really powerful leading line as well and it kind of directs your attention to it now one thing that's great about this image is great thing about that is it creates two natural leading lines and you also have the two arrows as well so now you have something we call momentum and with that momentum it's leading this person down so like we said leading lines are going to draw the attention from point a to point b and you want to use that leading line to be able to say hey this is the story we're trying to tell this is where you should start looking and as you go we're going to go ahead and introduce different things and that's what's going to make that image powerful now Flavian, i think you did a great job compositionally you framed it perfectly in my opinion i mean there's no other way that you could have you know done this better you got both arrows in there one thing that i would watch for really quick is going to be your corners when you take a street photography photos definitely look on the far corners of each frame particularly what i'm talking about is this thing right here it's not bugging me 100 percent. i mean this image is already beautiful as is but this could be a little bit better just by taking that out you know kind of cleaning around the edges making sure there's not too much clutter around there. So, Faviana Camargo, great job on this image, man. I think you did a wonderful job again using those natural arrows. Just keep on going and uh, clean up the sides just, just a little bit. Now, the next submission is from Deanne Films, and I wanna use this person's image here as an example to show that street photography isn't always about going out there and taking pictures of people. When you see an interesting image or an interesting scene, I should say, and it's dramatic and it pulls emotion you know those are some of the things that you want to look for in street photography does it pull emotion you know is it telling a story and Deanne's image here absolutely did that for me when you look here symmetrically just look at the composition it's beautiful yes it's a little bit off but i think there's a reason for that because if you look straight up to the top where the statue kind of holds her arms up the moon or if maybe that's the sun but i'm pretty sure it's the moon the moon is sitting right in between the the statue's arms and i think that's an absolutely stunning stunning image uh dn films great eye catching that you know what i mean i would have i would have overlooked that um, and that's something I feel like, you know, in street photography that you can do. If you can pull apart a scene, something that's often overlooked and make it into art, make it into something that you see, it's your perspective and make it beautiful, more power to you. You don't always need to have people in your frame. You don't always need to have, you know, movement, leading lines and all of that jazz. If it pulls out in motion, if it's a dramatic scene and it gets across, you get your story across, by all means, you did a great job. So DN Film, beautiful job with this photo and thank you for submitting this as well uh, very eye-opening to myself all right the next image submitted here was from eduardo salgado and one thing that i really enjoyed about this guy's image is that it was taken on a polaroid now 
I'm not sure if this is a Polaroid scan or if this was an image directly placed into like a Polaroid frame. Regardless, if it was shot on Polaroid, man, more power to you. Now, the image that we're looking at here reminds me again of a very classic street photography feel and vibe because at the top and at the bottom, you have dark and black negative space and you have that opening that kind of creates a subframe. I really like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this black line all the way that goes across because that acts almost as another leading line and you can see there there's that person that's sitting at the coffee table so i mean very simple composition again eduardo this is a great image i love the way you use subframes for anybody out there who doesn't know what a subframe is it's essentially placing the subject with inside of another frame it's a picture within a picture beautiful job eduardo and man if this was taken on polaroid banger props to you brother you did a great job on this one all right, this image here was taken by Cody Hoyt. And Cody, first of all, this is actually a really, really funny image. I mean, initially looking at it, you have a little boy who looks like he's looking inside of like, I mean, I understand that it's a window, but it's not clear. And I think that's what makes it funny. There's humor within this photo. Again, it's pulling emotion out of me. When I looked at this photo, when I first saw it, I opened up the email and I was like, what the heck is this kid doing? And I realized he's just trying to look inside. Now, that's one of the things as well. When you look at the image here, there's this shadow kind of leading down towards the boy. First of all, that's one of those leading lines that we're talking about. The next thing is the way the father or grandfather, whoever he is, holds the boy. It's not the most usual way you would see you know, a parent or guardian holding a child. So that kind of adds into like another mystery and aspect to the photo. So if you can pull apart surreal images or surreal moments, I should say, out of everyday life, you can make some really powerful street photography photos. If you guys ever heard of Henri Cartier Bresson, he was a big fan of surrealism um, and he studied it and he almost tried to include surrealism within his photos. And this is what I see in this image here, a surreal image, because you have a kid looking through what looks to be a window, but it's just dark, so you don't really see anything in it. And it's kind of, you know, it brings up that question when you first see it. It's like, what is this kid doing? Why does that dad look like that? And you also have that nice leading line directly headed towards the kid's head. So it all works out and it all mixes together like honey on a biscuit. And, <laughs> and I think it's a dope image. So Cody Hoyt, Two thumbs up on this one, brother. Keep it going. All right, now the next image here was submitted by Joa. That's what he wanted me to call him in his email. Joa, what's up, brother? So this image here, it's beautiful. I love the fact that there's also this natural arrow at the top here, again, using those natural arrows. Also, just the contrast of the two people against that garage door, that back wall there. Very, very, very interesting, and I like how they're separated apart. A very, very clean image indeed. You also have this really nice bike here, and then it kind of all just ties together, folks. I mean, there's different elements within the frame, and this kind of reminds me of something that I look for when I go out there to uh, take street photos. It's a very clean and calm image. Joe, this is beautiful, man. Wherever you took this photo, by the way, it looks like a movie set, just saying. <laughs> All right, you guys, and the last submission of the night comes from Jules. I'm going to go ahead and leave his Instagram here again as usual. Now, when I first initially look at your image here, the first thing that I see is leading lines. You have this very strong kind of triangular leading line that goes all the way across the frame. And not only do you have that, but you also have this C-shaped leading line that's from that staircase. You have this black one that goes here, and then you have this one as well. Now, you guys can see all of these lines, all of the red lines that I'm drawing over the top, are all leading to the main focal point of the image, and that is the boy that's hanging on the side of the staircase. He looks like he's hanging on, not for his dear life, it doesn't look like it's too high. But the reason why I was drawn to it is because it creates kind of like this emotion. And like we talked about in one of the recent images, it creates visible tension. The one thing that I do want to talk about, Jules, in your image here is that you use this really, really, really dope uh, like foreground. And I'm pretty sure it was like a rail that you shot against with. I would probably look around the edges again to kind of clean up the composition. I know that with certain angles, it's going to be hard to kind of do this. So one thing that I'll do is when I take a photo, like especially in your example here, there's going to be that first snapshot. You know what I mean? You're going to look through the frame, you're going to compose and you're going to snap. 
I always try to take at least four to five frames of the same image at different angles. So I'll take it dead center, I'll take one to the right, one to the left, one from the top, and then one at a lower angle, just so I can kind of hit all of those. But if you were to be able to kind of change the angle to where some of those tables at the bottom there weren't so visible, I think that would completely change it. And that bar as well at the top, the triangular kind of bar that you have across, going across, if it weren't to kind of cut off his head just a slight bit, it would also be nice as well, you know, create some negative space in between there. But otherwise, you did a fantastic job with this composition. So Jules, great job with this image, man try to hit all those angles and like i said i love your use of leading lines great job with this one all right you guys so that's gonna wrap it up for tonight's street photography critique video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys weren't chosen for this one please do not feel discouraged again it was based off of a random number generator so if you weren't chosen this time maybe you will be in the future if you guys want to participate in any of these photo critiques go ahead and follow me over on my instagram at king japes also comment down below any comment suggestions or if you guys have any new ideas for the street photography critique series maybe we can do portrait critiques or you know some other film photography stuff or digital whatever it may be i just want to say again you guys thank you for sticking around i uh, hope this video wasn't too long and i hope you enjoyed it folks so uh, as always you guys know what it is king japes out here as always minota <clears throat> minota gang yeah